And you can grab a hold of that. All this other stuff becomes mundane, yes. obsolete, unnecessary. Yes, and I'm going to be in the book of St. John for a little while. I'm going to read a lot of scripture. And I learned in the years of teaching the preacher that many of us know this word. With the sincerity and the obedience to the word. We are great scriptural students, but to be able to do it, we find it somewhat difficult in most conditions. Particularly when your own life is a little bit uncomfortable. When things are not going as good as you want them to go. Because he was done with a secret motive. The motive simply is to be seen and recognized at some point of time in someone's eyes. And this is wrong. It is wrong for the body of Christ to even operate in that fashion because that's not how Jesus did it. Jesus went about doing good to all them that didn't even deserve it. Am I still correct here? Yes, you know, I, because y'all been in church so long, I can't disavow your knowledge that he healed the sick, mm -hmm. that he gave sight back to the blind. Some of us sitting here today are, uh, are under the grace of God when we didn't deserve it. He did it for us anyway. Yes, yes. He made the way or he healed our bodies or he delivered our minds from being ripped from us or he reached into our heart and pulled the pieces of our shattered soul and put it back together with a love that we yet can't comprehend. Yes. Yes. And still, amen, we have run into the complications that God, amen, is burdensome because to love the way he said to love is to act like him. But yet he did all these things, and the day he needed the people the most, the day he needed those individuals to stand up and be counted as one who was blessed of the Lord, that son that was raised from the briar, that mother, a man who received her son back, that blind man, that those nine lepers or ten lepers did not, amen, defend or come to his rescue when he was standing in the presence of Pontius Pilate. All those people he delivered over all those years, those three and a half years, were not at the city gate screaming for his release, but they joined the crazy mob of crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. You would think that the deeds meant something, that the miracles would bring them to be on Jesus' side, that the good operation of God would cause them to, amen, come to his aid in the hour of his need. When all things were now against them, you would think there would be at least one voice, amen, that would be bold enough to stand out against the mob and say, hold it. Did he not do such wonderful things for us? Did, did he not bless us when we didn't need to be blessed? Where, where's the man of legion? Who amen, had a legion full of devils, amen, trying to kill him every day in the grave tombs of the dead? Where, where, where is the amen, the, the man who was blind from birth, who he amen, took some spit and some dirt and moved upon his eyes and told him to go down to the pool of Simone and wash his eyes and sight was given back to him. Where was he, amen, above all the measures of things? Hallelujah. Glory be unto God. I don't even see Lazarus standing at the cross. Wherever he was, he wasn't there. He, he should have waited. I was dead. Three days, four days dead, bound by the chains of death. And I heard a voice reach into the darkened chasms and call me out of the place I was standing. Where was his voice at when Jesus needed him the most? We have learned to sing all the right songs and make all the right statements, but where are we at? 
when it comes time to stand up for the glory of God's sake. Where are we when we forgot how he healed us and delivered us and set us free and brought us out and brought us through? And where are we at now because something didn't go your way or life didn't treat you right? Now you're hostile and you're bent and you're upset and you're pissed off and all that. But why are you like that? Because when you were out there by yourself, it was God that sustained you. It was God that kept you. It was God that preserved you. You had nobody else to depend on but He, the living God. Now we have somewhat changed our mannerism because things are not conducive to what we want. But I've learned, amen, that tribulation, amen, is the thing that brings up the truth about who you really are. Yes. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. Right. Trial exposes those inner things that you're able to hide behind the mask of a smile. Words are capable of, amen, crowbarring yes. of the secret measures of the darkness of your own soul. Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, yeah. Suddenly the song is not as bright. The praise is not as hefty. The hand clapping is not as vibrant. The dance has lost its luster. Because the truth of the fact is, you might not have been what you said you were. And yet the word of God stands true to them who have come to know him in the pardon of their sins. Those who claim that we have been baptized Amen. With the Holy Ghost and yes, with yes, fire. Yes, 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 we are sealed by the glory of Almighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Whether I have a home or have eat or have clothes, Thank I'm yet sealed you. by Almighty God. Hallelujah. All my worldly possessions fall into the dunghills of nothingness. I am yet sealed. Hallelujah. By the top spirit of the living God. If I stand alone in a desert place because all my friends and family has abandoned me in my hour of plight, I'm yet sealed Hallelujah. in the spirit of Almighty God. And the joy of my Father abides in the depths of my soul. My mouth is yet filled with the praise of His majesty. My heart still beats under the touch of His glory. God. Since when did my salvation depend upon another other than Jesus Christ? Since when did my joy depend on how you thought or how you felt? Since when did the strength of my life become your opinion? Since when do I cry out to the lying wonders of your own perception when I have walked up in the truth of God's eternal word that said God had been made free by the blood of the Lamb ordained of God before the foundation of the world to bring praise unto his majesty.
Either you are filled with the Holy Ghost, or you just got moved on by the Holy Ghost. The past I spoke in tongues, but tongues didn't give you the power like it should have. You didn't have the might that sustained you in the midst of life's storms. You didn't have the ability to rise up against your enemy if you had to stand by yourself and declare today I will not be moved. But the greatest absence, the greatest operation to show that you have lost your place is that you lost your first commandment. A new commandment. I give unto you a new set of orders, a new direction, a new action, a new plan of strategy that the very enemy himself has no weapon to stop or overthrow. A place that he's not able to enter into because I am it and I am it inside of you. It can't be shaken by the affairs of this world. It can't be a man thrown down by the conditions of human relationships. Familyhood can't put an end to it. Husband and wife can't stop it from brewing in the hearts of them that has it. Kids can't snatch it out of the souls of their parents. And a parent can't rip it out of the souls of their children. If they really get what I'm talking about this morning, it's a perpetual operation that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. It doesn't have the ability to quench it, stop it, ruin it, turn it, or amen, disguise it. Hallelujah. See the picture the other day called Jeremiah. The prophet of doom or destruction. He didn't want to preach. Come to find out a lot of people that get called don't want to preach. And I'm one of them. He didn't want to preach because he didn't want the responsibility that surely follows a man the call. We all want to be something, but we don't want the rest. We want something, but we don't want to have to face. Amen. The responsibility of what we want. Ah. Having it is not as easy as a, hey, keeping it. 